Hello, this is the Free Math Tutor, and this broadcast is about rounding off when you're doing problems that involve more than one step, and what effect the rounding has on the final answer. There's an awful lot showing here, but I'm not going to demonstrate this problem. I have a solved problem sitting on the chalkboard to illustrate what happens with rounding. This is a trigonometry problem. There's three steps. In the first triangle, we're finding this side, which allows us to move to the second triangle and find the bottom side. And that allows us to move to the third triangle and find the unknown angle, which is what the question is really asking for. Because I have to do this in three steps, I'm applying three formulas. And what's going to happen to my final answer if I'm rounding off the answer to step one and then the answer to step two? Well, there's different ways to do this. The best way is to use the memory of your calculator, which means that you don't round off until you're writing down your final answer. Your answer has to be exact if you do it that way. And if you are clever with using the memory keys and the bracket keys in a calculator, then even with a really long problem, it's possible to do this. In trigonometry, back when I went in high school, a uh, time when uh, not all students had calculators yet and they were not required to have calculators, we had to use trigonometry tables. And trigonometry tables had all of the values rounded to four decimal places for a reason. And the reason was that if you're always rounding your step-by-step -step problems to four decimal places, then so long as the exam or the teacher at the end is asking you to round to the nearest hundredth or the nearest tenth or the nearest unit, your answer will round to the right answer. These people, of course, back then did not have access to calculators, so they could not use the memory of the calculator. Often students round to two decimal places, and this can introduce quite a bit of error, and I've illustrated this with the answer to this problem. Using the memory of my calculator, the final answer is 47 degrees if it's rounded to the nearest unit. But if it's rounded to the tenth, it's 46.6 degrees. Rounded to the hundredth, it's 46.57 degrees. And rounded to the nearest thousandth, it's 46.573 degrees. If I'm rounding to four decimal places, every time I do a step, writing down my answer rounded to four decimal places, and then using that four decimal place answer in my next step, the answers I get rounded to the nearest unit, tenth, and hundredth are the same, 47, 46.6, and 46.57. It's only when I get to the nearest thousandth that it might start to deviate. In this case, it's 46.573. Even that has rounded to the right value. But if a student is rounding to two decimal places, it's only if they are asked to round to the nearest unit that they have the right answer, 47 degrees. If they are rounding to two decimal places and they are asked to give their final answer rounded to the nearest tenth, then they have 46.9 degrees instead of 46.6. Already, they have a mistake. And they will lose marks because of it. So, how do we deal with this? What we do is we use the memory of our calculator as much as possible, and when we feel that we can't, then we can round to a larger number of decimal places, hoping that that will not affect our final answer. If we have a four-step or five-step problem, then this situation can get even worse. Four decimal places might not be enough, and rounded to the nearest tenth, you might have a value, final answer value that is wrong. What I like to do, of course, because you can't write down what the calculator has in its memory. It goes to eight digits or 10 digits, it depends on the calculator. But you also have to justify what you're doing as you're answering a problem if you're in an exam, for instance. So as you do each step, you're writing down your intermediate answers. And of course, we can't write down a decimal that goes on forever. So what I like to do is to choose whatever, to choose two places or four places and write down the answer rounded to that amount, but then being careful to keep the real answer in the memory of my calculator and that's what I'm using for the next step. So my answer right here might say 17.38 is x. But what I really have in my calculator is 17.376 and on and on and on. When I go on to do my second step, I'm not using the 17.38 that I wrote down. I'm using the value that's still sitting in the calculator. This is the way to deal with this situation so that you will not 
lose marks on an important question on an exam based on rounding problems. Once you get up to high enough levels of math and science, for instance, at college level, you are responsible for being careful of this and you will lose marks if you get it wrong. This is the Free Math Tutor. If you want to see more videos like this one, all you have to do is go to www.thefreemathtutor.com and you will see hundreds of videos like this one that I've made in the past. Thank you.